So this season of Advent is a season of preparation for the joy of Christmas. And we were meditating yesterday how good it is to have this sense of anticipation. You know, when you're looking forward to someone coming home from holidays, maybe that's going to be a little more difficult this year. But in general, this is another aspect of, of the Christmas season. People coming home uh, from abroad, working in Australia or studying abroad, who knows. And they'd come back for Christmas. And this sense of anticipation. Again, if you've ever been in love and you're separated from your loved one for like four minutes because they've gone to the shop and you have a sense of anticipation, I can't wait until they come back and I can see them again, you know? And it's just this, it's just this anticipation which makes then the moments together all the more precious. The anticipation, the build-up, this maranatha is what makes Christmas as well so special. You know, we're, we're building up this idea, right, that Christ is coming back. There's a little danger in this, though, that we might think uh, that the season of Christmas is solely or exclusively about Jesus coming into the crib. That is most definitely part of it. But the Lord comes to us in, in, in three ways, or at least Advent prepares us for the Lord's coming in three ways. Obviously, yes, the Lord's coming at Christmas. 25th, 29th, the 24th of December, uh, we will be welcoming the Lord into our crib. So we're celebrating the Lord's birthday. Absolutely wonderful, no problem with it. Fantastic. But we're also preparing or trying to be more aware of preparing our hearts for the Lord's coming at every Holy Mass, in every Eucharist, right? So it's, again, it's important that the season of Advent isn't just about Christmas Day. Uh, it's also about receiving the Lord uh, in the Eucharist when, when, when we can, that, that I welcome him with, with a heart that's actually desiring him, a heart that has looked forward to him, a heart that has actually almost been in, 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 almost been in pain waiting for him. And hopefully, like, uh, as people are able to return to Mass now over the next couple of weeks, we, we'll actually feel and somehow satisfy that desire to some degree. Lord, I have, I've been away from Mass for, for so long, and now finally I can receive you. And to fill our hearts in with this love and this, this, this warm welcome. You know, the door is wide open and the stove on, and, and Lord, it's so, so, so good to receive you again. You know, we've been separated for weeks, months at this stage, and now finally I can receive you again. So I think Advent can take on a, a different kind of a meaning for us this year. And finally, the, the third meaning of preparation of Advent isn't just for the 25th uh, of December. It isn't just to receive at Mass, important as they are. But it's also to remind us of the fact that one day the Lord will return, or one day I will return to him. Either way, one day I'm going to see the Lord face to face. <clears throat> one day you will meet this guy. This Jesus that we've been talking about and we've seen crosses on, on church buildings and jewellery and uh, the expressions that we have that are, that are based in, on, on the Christian faith and so many of our, our laws, even in the state, that are based on Christianity and all of sacred scripture which has prepared the Lord's coming and then finally it happens, passion, death and resurrection, the Lord establishes the church and away we go 2,000 years later. All of this, the guy at the centre of it all, you are going to meet him, all of you. It's quite an astounding thought, you know, because that's how we're kind of we're kind of so busy. You know, have you ever looked through, you know, those, those kitchen towel rolls? Yeah, remember when you were a child, right? And you had a kitchen towel roll, and you, you thought you thought it was a telescope. You thought it actually could make things seem bigger, when what it just really does is just really narrow your field of vision. Okay, that's how we see life. Okay, we see a small little portion of life. A, a tiny little 85-year timeline, which we call life. You know, and that's all we see, right? It's such a narrow field of view. Whereas the Lord sees the whole picture, okay? And, and in this narrow field of view, we can be so distracted by, oh my goodness, all I can see now is that speck of dirt on the ambo. What must I do? I must go to the shop. I must get a cloth. I must get a, maybe a bit of sandpaper. I must get a paint. And all, that's all I see, and this is, this is taking all of my focus, Forgetting the fact that there's a whole world out there. But this is like, this is how I have an exam. I exam, exam. It's the end of the world. It really isn't. You know what I mean? Or those new shoes that I've been saving up for, or this new airsoft gun that I've been working for, whatever it may be. You know, that's it. That's, that's all I'm waiting for. This is it. My life is pivoting on this really 
really insignificant point right now, you know? Uh, forgetting the whole picture. You are going to meet Jesus. So what are you going to say? <clears throat> Anybody ever prepared that one? Have you, have you prepared that speech? What are you going to say? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what I would say. I don't know. Hopefully, thank you. Hopefully, sorry. <laughs> I might say, uh, yeah, about that life there. Sorry for, for everything. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for every time you carried me. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for all those occasions I wasn't even aware that you took obstacles out of my path. And because I didn't fall, I didn't realize that you'd remove the obstacle. You just guided me along and cleared things out of the way, and I didn't even see it. Thank you for every time you forgave me. Thank you for every time you blessed me. Thank you for my vocation, my family, for the sincere friends that I made. Thank you for being able to serve you, not just in, in the church, important and all as that is, but being able to serve you and my neighbor, being able to serve the kids, night and day, day and night, changing nappies, feeding, bringing them here, there and everywhere to training, all those occasions where I had the possibility of, of loving and serving you in them. Thank you for the miracles, the graces, the healings, Thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for your unfathomable love. For your sacred heart, which never ceased to beat out of love for me. Thank you for your gaze, which was never taken off me my whole life. Thank you for giving yourself to me in the Eucharist. Thank you for giving me your own mother as my guide. Thank you, Lord, for the crosses which humbled me and stopped me counting on myself. Stopped me thinking that I was the center of the universe, but reminded me that life here is fleeting. Let this season of Advent prepare us profoundly for that day when we will see the Lord face to face. Amen.